Today I'm going to be changing it up again. I feel like it's been a couple of weeks now since I've done any work on the Astra. Obviously I moved the Astra out of the way so that I could get the Corsa on the drive um, to do all the work that I've done. So now that that's pretty much done, I've gone ahead and swapped them back around again so the Astra is back where it was. And today what I plan to do is change out pretty much the whole exhaust system from front to back. Now the reason I'm doing this is because as you know when I first got this car it was burning oil pretty rapidly and the trouble with that is not all that oil got burnt off and a lot of it got left in the exhaust system itself. Now although the car doesn't burn oil through the engine, when the engine gets up to operating temperature and the exhaust also gets really hot, it does emit a small amount of smoke. Nowhere near how bad it was before, but there is a small amount of smoke I noticed once the exhaust gets hot. Now when I had the exhaust separate from the engine when I was doing the engine work, I did notice that there was a bunch of oil inside the exhaust. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna change out the exhaust from the cat all the way back. Um, I'm not gonna be replacing it with a, like an aftermarket performance exhaust. I'm just gonna be straight swapping it with another standard setup um, for now anyway. Now I haven't bought another catalytic converter because one, they're quite expensive and two, I, I figured I could just clean this cat out, use some like fairy liquid and some water, um, wash it out and hopefully that'll do the job there. But the rest of the exhaust, I've got brand new parts, I've got brand new flexi, brand new center section and a brand new back box as well. So I do want to upgrade the exhaust sort of later down the line, but I think for now the parts are so cheap that it doesn't really matter too much i figured i'd just stick a standard exhaust system on it for right now and then in the future if i want to upgrade i can do then so that is the plan for today i'm going to get the car jacked up get the old exhaust off and um, clean out the catalytic converter that's on it already just stick some fairy liquid and some water in there and try and clean out as much as i can of the oil and then the rest of the exhaust is just going to be thrown away obviously i need to transfer the oxygen sensor over that's in the uh like post cat part of the exhaust need to transfer that over but everything else should just be an unbolt and bolt up job i've got some new gaskets and some exhaust paste to go on it as well so that's today's plan i want to get a new exhaust on this thing now a lot of you will probably say um, you could just let it run and let it burn off i have let it run like three or four times now for a good half an hour um, but it just doesn't seem to get sort of hot enough you really need to take it on a decent sort of motorway run but the trouble with that is the mot's run out i can't take it out anywhere to actually give it a good run in so this is the only option i could really think of it's pretty cheap i've got all the exhaust parts front to back for like 80 or 90 quid which is you know it's pretty much nothing so i think that's enough waffling for now let's get cracking and get the old exhaust off so i'm thinking the best thing to do is probably to jack the car up and get the whole thing up on axle stands so get all four axle stands under the car because um, i'm going to need to be able to work from the front all the way to the back so it's not really any good just jacking the front up because i won't be able to get to uh, the back box so i'm going to get the whole car jacked up on all four axle stands that way it'll give me best access i think to tackle the whole exhaust <laughs> Alright, there you have it, all floating in the air, I've got a good amount of space under here for me to lay under here and do my work. As you can see, I've got the jack still there on all four axle stands, and as you can see, this exhaust has seen bare days. Um, it's pretty crusty, pretty rusty, got a few holes going on in the back box, regardless of whether it had oil in it, it's definitely worth a change anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and get some WD-40 on like these bolts and the ones in the middle as well, just because they look a little bit crusty and then we'll uh, start getting this thing stripped off. Okay, so before I get under there, a couple of things. If you're looking to do an exhaust yourself, if you've never been under a car before, let me tell you a couple of things. Number one, WD-40. If your exhaust's been on there for a long time, like Polly has on a car this age, WD-40 is like your best friend. Um, make sure you soak the bolts like sort of 10, 15 minutes. Let it set in. Um, and they'll be a lot easier to undo, trust me. Probably the most important thing, wear some safety glasses or something to protect your eyes because you do not want rust from an exhaust falling in your eyes and it will fall in your eyes and your mouth and your nose but you definitely don't want it in your eyes because that is not much fun. Right, so with that out of the way, let's get this exhaust off. <laughs> Right, so I've got both the back box bolts out. As you can probably see, this one snapped. Now, if you're just changing your back box, this could be an issue, um, but I'm changing my whole system, so it's not a big deal. Just means I'm gonna have to find a replacement bolt, but I've got a bunch of bolts in my shed, um, so I should be able to find one, no problem. 
Okay, so time for another quick little pro tip. Again, that involves the WD-40, but the exhaust is held onto the car with like these rubber hangers. You've probably seen them before. If you've done an exhaust, you'll know what I mean. You've got the exhaust that goes through the bottom hole, and then there's like a mount that goes to the car that goes through the top hole. Now these can be rusty and they can sometimes be difficult and you end up sort of wrestling with them. But WD-40 or another lubricant, if you spray that in the holes where the mount goes through, that will make it like a million times easier to get this exhaust off. Another little quick tip. Did you see how easy that was? And that is the back box off. I'm gonna keep hold of these rubber mounts because I'm probably gonna need them when I put my new exhaust on. You can see how uh, crusty and musty this exhaust is, so it's had its day. It's pretty old. You can it's hear it's full of rust as well. I don't know if you can see this. I just now went to undo these bolts. Like, you can see this clamp is still firmly tight on there. I barely give it a turn. And look, that front section is pretty much pulling out of there. So I probably had a really bad exhaust leak anyway. That probably explains all the uh, exhaust putty that's on here as well. Someone tried to seal it. Well, turns out I probably don't even need to undo them bolts, then I'm just gonna leave them. And then I'll undo it from the front where it bolts to the catalytic converter, and then just pull this pipe straight out. Before I get too carried away, there is also a O2 sensor just there, which plugs in right here. So I'm just gonna undo that before it starts hanging on the wire. There you go. So you know I said I thought there was oil still in the exhaust. This is the um, like the front sort of section that I just took off. You just saw me take this off. If I stick my finger in the end here, just wipe out. Can you see that? Can you see that on my finger? That is all oil in there still. After three or four times of running it, see all that still in there? So you imagine all that is built up all in this exhaust, all in the center section and probably in the catalytic conveyor as well. It just takes so long to burn off. And the trouble is this section of the exhaust here just doesn't get very hot. Um, it probably gets hot, like really hot up to about where the lambda sensor is. But after that, this bit really doesn't get that hot, not hot enough to burn off oil anyway. So I don't think you're ever gonna really get rid of that, which is why I'm changing it. Right, so the center section is the last bit that I need to be removed from under the car. And it's just held on by two mounts at the front, just there. And there's another two mounts just there. So I'm just gonna take those mounts off and pull this section out. So you can see right here is where I broke that bolt off, which is a shame. These nuts on here are like captive nuts. They don't, they don't move, they just stay there. So uh, you'd have to drill that out or something if you're reusing this, but luckily I'm not. Okay, so with the rest of the exhaust off, the only part left on is the uh, exhaust manifold, which I've had off like a week ago. And as you can see, the nuts are all nice and shiny and new. So that should be nice and easy to pull off. So I'm just gonna quickly do that as well. Right, so they have the complete old exhaust, everything off. I'm gonna go ahead and get the new stuff out and sort of lay it next to it just so I can compare everything, make sure everything looks the same um, and just make sure I've got everything that I need to put this stuff back on. I need to transfer over oxygen sensor and I just need to take that one out because I'm gonna be cleaning that out in a little while as well. Um, but I need to transfer that one over.
as you can see, you've got the brand new exhaust next to the old one and just comparing everything. The only thing different on these two is that the tip is a bit longer. I don't really know why, but I could always cut it down if I needed to. You can see, all looks the same, all looks the same. Silencer, a little bit smaller this one, but all the same. Same, same, same. All the way to the Flexi. Again, the Flexi is a tiny bit smaller in length, but makes no difference whatsoever. So, happy with that. You get a new gasket for this end. As you can see, a little triangle gasket to fit on there. And you also get a new clamp here to fit on this. I've also been provided with some exhaust paste. So, as you can see, they pasted this one. I'm probably going to end up doing the same to this just so I don't get any blows. Um, I'll just paste all around here, slide it in, and we should be good. Now, in typical fashion, I have forgotten one item from this whole thing which is not going to hold me back too much however i'm not going to be able to finish this whole thing up today and um, because there's a gasket which goes in here it's like a little donut that sits around this bit that seals in the center pipe you can sort of see it on the old one it's like this uh, donut looking thing i'm not going to reuse that obviously look at the state of it but i do need to get a new one for this and i'm also at the same time I'm um, gonna get some new bolts. Now I was just gonna use a random bolt out of like my bolt collection in the shed over there, but um, I'd rather have sort of the proper bolts that you use for this. Um, also grab some springs as well, some new springs for it. So it's all sort of brand new. There's no point in doing like half a job. I might as well go the whole way. Um, got a whole new exhaust. I might as well get a new gasket and also get some new bolts as well to fit in there. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff on the car. I can hang it up. Um, I can get most of it bolted up, but I won't be able to sort of finish up the back box today. Um, I'll have to fit that at a later date. I'll probably go to Eurocar Parts later on or tomorrow. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I can actually remove this O2 sensor. These are quite rusty and they do get stuck in there. So I want to see if I can get that one out. I also need to take the one out of that because I'm now about to clean that out. Um, so that is my next thing. I'm going to give them a little bit of WD-40 uh, and then I've got like a special O2 sensor socket tool that I'll use to try and loosen them. All right, so while that WD-40 is setting in, I just figured I'd show you the tools that I use um, when I'm dealing with O2 sensors usually. This is the ratchet I usually go for, which is like a nice long handle. Um, as you know, leverage is always a good thing. So a nice long handle ratchet. Doesn't matter if a flexi head or not, makes like no difference. Although if the exhaust's on the car, it does make it easier to get to uh, the O2 sensors if they're in a hard place. So um, nice long ratchet. And then this is the special O2 sensor tool. You can see it's a 22 millimeter socket obviously with the cutout to go over the wire. It's made by Blue Point. there you go. 7 8 or 22 millimeter oxygen sensor wrench. Um, doesn't seem to have a part number on it, so I can't give you that, but um, anything like this, they probably do other brands. You don't have to get a Blue Point one. I'm sure there's other brands that make them like this, but I've found that these rarely, in, in fact, I've never stripped out an O2 sensor with one of these. It's always managed to get it out. So uh, I highly recommend one of these tools if you can get hold of one. I'm sure you can find them on eBay or Amazon or something like that, but right, let's give it a go, see if we can get these out. Well, that actually worked a lot easier than I thought it was going to. The one in the manifold was not even tight. I literally touched it. I must not have tightened it up properly um, when I put it in, but there you go. There's the O2 sensors both out. So the reason I wanted to take this out was because I'm going to clean it out. Now, I know you can do this. I've seen people do it on the internet before. I'm just going to dunk it in a bucket of water, put some fairy liquid in it and uh, clean it out. Now, I'm sure this is probably the hottest piece of the exhaust, right? This gets real hot when the engine's running. I'm sure most of the oil is probably burned out of this if there was any in this, but just because I've got it off and just because it's easy, I'm gonna clean it out. You can see all the lots of deposits in here, some oil deposits in here. Um, I'm gonna give it a good clean out just because I can. And at least then when I put it on, I'll be happy that this doesn't have any oil in it. And then with the brand spec and new exhaust, I'll uh, be like 99% sure that this whole exhaust system has no oil in it whatsoever. So let's get cracking with that. A little bit of fairy liquid in the old oxygen sensor hole. Then I'm gonna grab a hose and just sort of spray it in there. Okay. 
Okay, so here's my thought process on putting this exhaust back. I'm gonna put it all back on. So I'm gonna put the back box on, I'll put the center section on. I'm gonna go ahead and mock it all up on the car, but I'm not gonna tighten down any bolts fully just yet, because until I get those last couple of bolts and that gasket for this, I don't wanna bolt it all up and put the exhaust paste on, and then I have to sort of unbolt it just to adjust it a little bit. So I'm gonna bolt it all up loosely, and then in the next video I'll quickly finish it up um, and show you what it sounds like and show you that it will no longer smoke anymore. Right, so unfortunately that's all I'm gonna be able to do under the car when it comes to the exhaust. Um, I'm gonna to have to order one of those gaskets for the back box and also some new bolts and springs as well to fit. Um, I'll have to order them off eBay or if they sell them at Euro Car Parts, I'll get them there. So with that being the exhaust done for today, um, I am gonna quickly just whip the front wheels off because since having the car, I've never had a proper look inside the front wheel wells, so at the suspension um, and all the suspension parts, I've never had a proper look. And I would like to know if there's any parts that I need to order for this car um, before the MOT, because I think it definitely needs front brakes. The discs are just too far gone, they're too rusty, um, and I'll chuck some pads on at the same time. And I just wanna make sure that the drop links are all right and the tie rod ends are okay. And I'm also gonna check the brake lines because the last two cars I've put in for MOTs, the Fiesta and the Corsa, the uh, other Corsa, they've both come back with brake line issues. So I'm gonna check this car front to back to make sure that the brake lines are all not rusty. And if they are, I'll clean them up and paint them or I'll replace them if they're that bad. So things to check now. Um, I just wanna make sure that I've got everything covered for when it goes in for the MOT, especially underneath the car. I wanna make sure that everything is good and this car's not gonna cause me any issues on MOT day. So I'm gonna whip the front wheels off, take a look. Right, so driver's side, like I said straight away, as you can see the uh, disc is extremely rusty and I don't think that's saveable. So, new disc is definitely in order, but I just want to check everything else. It actually feels like, feels like we've got a little bit of movement in this bottom ball joint on the, uh, on the drop link. I don't know if you can really see that, but I can feel like a little click. It's not in the top one, it's in the bottom one, so I'm going to have to change them out. That's not so bad, they're quite easy. Tie rod end feels pretty um, solid. These are backing discs for the brakes are all absolutely destroyed. Brake lines look okay. I also usually check the boot on the axle, make sure there's no splits. Make sure everything looks good there, which it does. In a tie rod boot, looks okay, no splits. Right, so on this side, looks like we're just gonna need a new drop link. These ones look like the factory ones anyway. I think the plastic ones are the factory ones. All right, let's check the other side. It's probably to no surprise that the brake disc needs changing on this side as well. That kind of uh, is a no-brainer. Let's just check this drop link this side. Mm, feels like there's a slight not as bad as the other one, but there's a slight bit of play in the top one on this one. You can feel like, the way I describe it is like a little click. You can almost feel like a little click when you rock it backwards and forwards like that. Spring looks all in one piece, apart from the uh, paint flaking off, as you can see. I think that we will get away with just changing the brakes and also the drop links on both sides um, so that they match. But that's not as bad as what I thought it was gonna be. It's a little bit rusty and crusty in here, but um, functionality wise it looks absolutely fine. All right, so I'm now under the car just checking out the brake lines because as you know brake lines have come up a couple of times on my MOTs and I found something that's actually really good. I don't know how well you can see this but these are the brake lines here, these two, and they're actually covered in grease the whole way down. Someone has covered them in like a layer of grease or something the whole way. So the likelihood of them being rusty is very very low. I will still check them all the way. We might have had a new line put in here at some point because you can see the greasy line stops and then there's a green line here which you can see has been bent by hand. You can just tell by how ununiform it is that's been bent by hand but it's a good job. Someone's done a good job on it and to be honest 
it looks fine all the way to the back. Right, so there you have it. I think that's going to about do it for today. Um, I've got the exhaust pretty much back on. I just need to bolt up a few more bits, but I'll do that in the next video. We also had a look for the first time properly in the uh, front wheel wells just to check what parts we need. I'll get a couple of drop links ordered and I'll also order some front brakes for this thing as well because definitely going to need it. So that's probably what I'll be tackling in the next video. I'll get them done. Um, and then I'll finish up the exhaust as well in the next video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Got rip glove. I've got a lot of cool things coming to the channel, which I'll announce um, in due course. I've got new designs for hoodies and mugs. And also I've bought a new camera. I've bought myself a GoPro. If you follow me on Instagram, you already know that. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you do, because I always go live on there. I went live on there with Lee Lockwood the other day, which is pretty cool. So if you're watching this, Lee, I um, appreciate you letting me join. I go live with other people and I sometimes just go live on myself, get to talk to you guys. And I post almost daily on there of things that I get up to and um, working on the cars and various other bits and pieces. So make sure you follow me on there. It's on the screen and in the description uh, down below. So there you go. Thanks for all the support so far. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next video.